Yeah. We're so excited. I've never, all my years working with choirs, I've worked with choirs all my career, throughout my career, for 35, 40 years. I have never seen a choir as universally excited and committed wow. to Fabulous. a work as the CR Master Chorale is, to presenting this work. It's, it's, like I said, it's been like nothing I've ever done musically. And uh, we're only about two-thirds of the way through <laughs> with rehearsals to get ready. And, and it's still, every time I do personal practice or up here with the rest of the choir, there's something that shows up for me that, that says, this is special. My worldview, every person has a different worldview, particularly around armed conflict. And this piece challenges that. You know, there's the excitement of, of going to war and the machismo of, of getting ready. And yet, when you sing about humans and animals who are living torches, I mean, that just, what does that mean? And what does it feel like? What would that be like? And so it's hard to, you know, sometimes stay present with the music because the, the words and the music themselves is, it itself is so uh, visceral. I'm uh, getting emotional thinking about the experience of singing this. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. In May of 2012, the Sierra Master Chorale is going to do a performance called The Armed Man, A Mass for Peace. Now that's a little outside of what we normally do for themes for Peak Moment, but I feel like the arts are so essential for moving past our head and into our hearts that I really wanted to include this. My guest today is Ken Harden, who is the music director and conductor of the Sierra Master Chorale. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. This is a pretty ambitious work. It is. It's a very big work, very powerful. It's ambitious on a lot of levels, on just the, the forces required, um, the intensity of the emotional content, mm -hmm. um, the, the mastery of the music, all of those things, and then um, bringing it bringing it to life in a way that an audience can, can participate in all of those things is the real challenge well, for us. Let's step back a little bit and tell us about the piece itself, because this is not a traditional, I mean, even the title's got this juxtaposition of war and peace right there. Right, so right. tell us about the And that's the what the itself. piece is all about, truly, about oh. war and peace. And um, it's, it's different um, from your traditional Choral literature, you know, many in choirs, many times we sing masses. Every composer has written a number of masses and uh, requiems and, and you name it, things like that. And, and those are, there, there's a similarity there in, in the type of expression and the type of emotion, all of those things, albeit that they exist over many different styles, period styles. This is a very new work. This was written as a millennium celebration mm -hmm. piece. So 2000 was its first performance by the composer Carl Jenkins with help from, um, and I'm going to draw a blank here, um, the gentleman's name, um, who is the curator or, of the British Royal Armory. And um, the Royal Armory wanted to, have, they do a lot of work um, in finding ways to promote nonviolence. Wow. because of the nature of what they present to the world and what the armory was over, mm. over centuries and centuries of providing arms to the royal family. Um, they wanted to do something special, different, spectacular, 
for the Millennium Celebration about consciousness, about peace, about nonviolence, about the relationship between war and peace, and um, the relationship between societies, between people, and armed conflict and violence. Yeah. And um, so they, I think his name is Guy Wilson. Okay. See, they, they came to me. Okay. Um, and so they, uh, they worked together. They went to Carl Jenkins, the composer, and um, Guy Wilson worked with him selecting texts that would be appropriate. It took them a while to come to uh, a sense of what they wanted to do. And, um, and then I, it, one of those things that, as we were talking earlier, it sort of takes on a life of its own and becomes an inspired um, process and the result is this work which doesn't um, doesn't in any way cast a shadow or a, a negative um, look at the warrior right. but actually right. celebrates right. and appreciates the warrior but then also looks at the at every every human being's yearning for peace and and really accomplishes that, I think, most powerfully through the juxtaposition of the images of how we get there, what happens in the process of, of arming ourselves, as it were, mentally and emotionally to go to war, and then truly what the, what the aftermath is, what the result is. And the music reflects that beautifully. Um, the, the beginning of the work is very orderly as it marches forward. And then when the actual conflict occurs in the music, the actual violence occurs, it becomes completely chaotic. And, um, and we, we get, there are actually, there, there are beautiful moments in this, there are very stirring moments in it, and there are extremely disturbing I, images. I, when, when we heard this, it was like the, the, the beatific quality of, some, of say, the Sanctus, or the, or the Benedictus is like just as uplifting as you'll find from any composer. Mm -hmm. And when the war hits and, and, the, and you hear the cannonballs, and it's like, uh, there's some parts that I found just hard to be with. Yeah. But that's probably but that's the right. Point. That's the point. Uh, to me, the point is, is um, the, there's this, this march, the, the, the warning call is where the piece starts, Loma Arma. The armed man is a, is a warning. Um, there's fear, the emotion of fear, um, warning, an alert um, that this is coming. And, and then we proceed to march through several movements of the work towards the, what becomes inevitable. And, um, and then the reality strikes. And um, like I say, the images are very, very disturbing. And to me, the, the point there is the, the honor and glory that, that is brought um, in front of us as a way of, of getting us worked up and, and marching forward that way to the inevitable is really not what we should be thinking about at that moment. We should be reflecting carefully on what the outcome mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. and is, is that what we want? Is that the, the appropriate? Um, outcome for whatever it is that we're, we're dealing with, whatever is going on. The music is not only beautiful in parts, but it's very troublesome in parts and reminds us of the horrors of war and those brave people who have gone ahead and fought wars for our country and lost their lives or lost their health, <clears throat> lost their families. So through all that, um, we come to this beautiful <clears throat> conclusion about it's better to have peace. It's better to work for peace. It's, we've tried other ways through all these years, and peace is really the better way to do it. And he certainly also taps, you know, after that, the grief, right. the loss. I mean, he's not and being shy. The, and the potential for, for peace mm -hmm. actually being the result, being the, the outcome, finding a lasting peace of of acknowledging because of these, the horrific images, the things that we've all experienced through, whether, whether immediately or vicariously through the things we hear about, we all carry those images with us. And so the, the end of the work is about, about finding a different way to, um, to achieve that 
that yearning mm -hmm. for peace. Mm -hmm. So, it, can I play sure. just a little bit Please of the, do. the? I want to I want to demonstrate this the um, the kind of juggernaut okay. that carries us through the beginning of the work and and. And I'd like to say one of the things that, as a musician, one of the things that's very powerful for me about this subject, and, and this isn't just from this work, but for a long time I've, I've thought this, um, is that we talk about music as the universal language, language of peace, that kind of thing. Music is also the language of war. Mm -hmm. Music is a big part of what makes this compelling inevitability happen, the trumpet calls. They talk about it in the music. Uh -huh. The text in the music uh -huh. talks about the trumpet's loud clangor excites us to arms. Yes. And the double, double beat of the drum, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so we get in the, this is a little ways into the work, and you hear the, and one of the things I think people will enjoy hearing is just from the piano, and of course it's, it's a whole different thing with the singers going in then when we have an orchestra on yeah. stage with us. Um, but the the, chords, the harmonic progressions that he uses are so interesting and compelling. So we have this in the Sanctus section. We're marching. Wonderful, wonderful chord progressions. Then we, we sweep into this. Through the work, it, it constantly unfolds. It constantly changes. It, it comes at us from a different direction. And then even within movements, it happens. So the, we have that going. And then just a few, a few measures later, we, we come into the, the text Gloria. This is Pleni sunt celi et terra on heaven and earth. And Gloria, glory. And the trumpet mm. call mm. comes in. Very compelling music. You, uh, you feel the, mar I mean, the beat of the march is you still can't going avoid on. It. Yeah. It's like and the yeah. heavens are opening. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's interesting that it's, it goes through the whole buildup. We get different movements that have a little bit different flavor to them. And then we come right back to the march. And it's almost always the same tempo. So it's always, it, it brings us, so it's almost like you can hear it in the back of your mind, even when the movement doesn't carry that march along, it's still with us, wow. Wow. moving us along. So then um, we get to the section that's actually going into battle, the charge, and, um, and it, lots of trumpet calls. This is where we get the trumpet's loud clangor, excites us to arms. Um, and, and coming out of that is the, the actual, it's all, you can almost visualize a, a battlefield um, more in the sense of people on horseback, that kind of thing, to masses clashing up yes. against one another. And it's still, it's all very, it, um, he, he changes the march a little bit from that just steady pulse. He, he excites it. So it's still got that steady pulse going, but now under it, it's got a, a three going with each of those. Okay. So rather than just this, we get one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> kind of feeling and then the chorus comes in over the top of that so 
that's probably kind of loud right yeah, there. No, no, that's, yeah, yeah. It's the ringside seat. It's a great, it's wonderful. It's just so, and, and you hear how, yeah, how yeah. organized and, and, and just right. moving along. It's that, it's that Relentless, juggernaut of you know, yes, inevitability right, yeah. moving. And then the aftermath of this happening is first quiet, dead quiet, which is, Rather Feather, disturbing, yeah. also, and then these very slow lines from the trumpet, and then the chorus sings very similar lines to that. different feel. There. Yeah, and then the, the there are solo voices coming and going. The chorus sweeps in in the middle of these things, always with the roll on the timpani below in the string bass. A completely yeah. different style. That's, that's one of the, I mentioned earlier the, the masses that we typically sing in choirs and different period styles. Usually you have, it, it's similar all the way through the work. It's, you know, the different tempos and, and somewhat different emotions, that kind of thing, but it all hangs together. This, this hangs together, certainly, but presenting every different kind of style. It's, uh, there's Palestrina, it's a movie score, it's an yes. opera, um, it's, it's the classical period, it's the romantic period. It's, it's modern. Brought, and it, modern, and then, and then it becomes yeah. modern. So yes. then we get the, these kinds of chords. Yeah. At one yeah. point, yeah. very dark, and setting the image up that the text is going to talk about. Edge also mentioned is that the text isn't traditional either. He's drawing his right. text from a right. lot He's, of wider sources. It's a um, it's an interesting um, setup. He's. He's used the, the notion gone back way back in history again to the Middle Ages mm. um, with the, the title The Armed Man actually references a piece of music, a, a song, a melody that was very popular in the Middle Ages, a French plain song entitled Le Homme Arme, which means the armed man. And it was, it was a, um, an alert, a, a cry of alarm about the armed man and the danger that, that the armed man represents. And, um, and, and it was very popular and very, very meaningful and um, carried a lot of, uh, people were fearful of conflict mm. um, because mm. they couldn't escape it. They were, you know, they're in, most times that's true still today, but you know, in small groupings of people, villages, um, when the armed man came, they were really defenseless. Yeah. And yeah. so it was a very mm -hmm. real thing. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance, there were hundreds of masses written based on this melody. Which 
the chorus sings at the beginning of yes, the work. Yes, they okay. sing Loma Arma. And so the, there's, a, there's a whole history, there's a whole subject in musicology about these armed man masses that happened, hundreds of them, over several hundred years. So he went back to that tradition and began from that point, and he uses the, the texts, the sections, uh, many of the sections of the Catholic mass, mm -hmm. but then in between them he intersperses um, religious writings and secular writings from many, many different societies from many different continents. So we get, um, we get um, things from the Arab world, from the Muslim world. Mm -hmm. We get things, um, we get writings of Rudyard Kipling. Mm -hmm. uh, we get things from, from the subcontinent, from India. We get Asian writings. We get the, some um, poetry, some text about the, um, the experience of, the, of someone who survived the atomic bomb in Hiroshima. Yeah, things like that. So he draws from so many different um, concepts and, and um, nationalities, if you will, or um, ethnic Which in a way, um, of positions. course, for the millennium makes it really universal, right. global. And, I, and global. that was truly their point, is that this is not a, this is not a topic, it's not a one-sided topic. It's not, okay. it's not something for one group of people to think about and, and do things about. It's something that we all yeah. need to, to yeah. be thinking about and talking about and addressing, and, and we all do. We all have that basic yeah. yearning. I really enjoy the fact that music uh, is a connection between peoples of all different walks of life. And it can uh, join people together and fight against some of the the tendencies the governments have to solve their problems by violence, if there are a lot of connections with people in those countries through music, then they'll push back against that tendency toward violence. And to me, that's very important. So, and it, the, so let, me, let me go the, after, so we don't leave people with the, the disturbing <laughs> yes, image yes. part of this. Good. So then the coming out of that, those disturbing images, are the hope for something mm -hmm. better and um, a, a sense of the, the calm and the peace that, that can be. So we go back from that to the Agnus Dei text from the Catholic Mass. And one of the, the, some of the most beautiful melodies I've ever encountered in choral music happen in this. So we have the Agnus Dei that starts almost with that same march, only very slow this time almost could be a dirge, but then this glorious melody. The sense of you know the the dirge like sobering quality and yet out of the ashes rising right right possibility yeah. hope caring yeah. oh. and like I said um, earlier it, it it operates on so many different levels we have this juxtaposition of of the the one that starts with those yeah. chords right up against and and some very disturbing images in the movement that follows that and then the on you stay. Just 
right up against one another. And the sort of the notion that, um, that we are, um, we're beings that are capable of absolutely unexplained horror, and then we're also beings that are capable of absolutely unexplained beauty. And it's, it's just incredibly powerful the way it moves through that Thank you for bringing story. this to our community. I mean, yes. we, are, we are really fortunate in our little burg here. And we're so community. excited. I've never, all my years working with choirs, I've worked with choirs all my career, throughout my career for 35, 40 years. I have never seen a choir as universally excited wow. and committed wow. to Fabulous. a work as the CR Master Chorale is to presenting this work. You know, I hope we do it justice. I think we will. Um, I, this group is <laughs> extremely motivated. It's, I think everybody's got the fire of this music. Somehow it's created a new level of desire to uh, excel and perform. And um, it's going to show up. I'm, I'm really confident of that. Give us the details. Give us the URL. I'll get... May 17th, Thursday at 7 p.m. Okay. May 20th, Sunday at 2 p.m. Okay. For any information you might want, the URL is www.inconcertsierra, all spelled out, dot org, O-R-G. Okay. In Concert Sierra is the, the parent organization. Sierra Master Chorale is part of and presented by In Concert Sierra. Okay. And um, there's a website with lots and lots of information there. And you can buy tickets online, that okay. kind of thing. All of that Wonderful. stuff is available or Wonderful. phone numbers to call and get more information, that kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing, giving us sort of a, a tour yes. of the music yes. here. Yeah. And my and, pleasure. Uh, I'm so I'm I'm as excited about this as the chorale is. I just I may I may I may not ever have been as excited either. It's hard to know yourself well, personally, but it's well, this is a very important piece of music, a very powerful piece of music. We have a fantastic orchestra. They're coming from all over the region to perform Bay Area, Sacramento, a lot of local players. This is going to be the place to be yes. to hear this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for you. that to us. Yeah. My guest is Ken Harden, the music director and conductor for the Sierra Master Chorale, The Armed Man, A Mask for Peace. Join us next time. Mm -hmm.